I would like to know your process. How do you work? And the way that I always approach my work, which is interesting, was assemblage. I've always like found objects on the flea market, swap meets, antique places. Um, out at our farm, I would find old farm machinery out in the field, and then I kind of gather it and put it together. When did you start? When did you know that you were an artist? Um, one of my big breakthroughs was when my, mother, my mother's friend who was a welder and she taught me how to weld. And the minute I could, I, I had like the big macho equipment and the big metal pieces and I could kind of take this piece and that be sort of the John Chamberlain, John Smith kind of method of found objects and putting them together. It was a huge breakthrough for me. And one of the things I started to do is traveling around the world. In my trips and travels, I took photographs. I've always been a photographer. If I'm on a trip somewhere, I'm the girl with three cameras strapped around me, one in my pocket and a video camera in my backpack. Anita, changing the camera all the time, changing the lens, carrying the bag. <laughs> Making her job. So I would come back from these wonderful exotic trips all over Southeast Asia, places I would go, and then I blew up the picture. And sometimes I actually will take a photograph and I'll do a painting from it, but not that often. And one of the things that happened was I didn't know how to frame them correctly. I didn't know what I wanted to do with the frames. And then my, uh, an old boyfriend of mine who's a graffiti artist in New York, Zephyr, he said to me one day, why don't you make your own frames? And I was like, Woo, a light bulb went off. So all of a sudden, you know, I've got this picture which is in Cambodia. This is the band in Cambodia. And I have this black and white photograph. And all of a sudden the frame just, I don't even know where they come from and how they get created. I build positive spaces and the piece has to evoke having one of these curly moody and this piece is the same thing you have the Kuan Yin statues this is from Vietnam and then the stat in the clothing it has this nice kind of movement so I wanted the frame to also have a movement to it this piece them up. This was a trip I took my nephews and because my, my family did not trust me with my nephews by myself in China, my parents came on this trip. So these are from here. Um, I am a feng shui consultant so to me this speaks of the ultimate Chinese image. And then pieces. These came from Bali. These were actually um, some really wonderful beads that came from Bali. So it's like, oh wow, they're the right color. I can pull it out. I also had these um, little goldfish. It's really magical when all of a sudden you're working on a piece and you're working with color and you're working with shape and design and something sitting on your shelf stares at you and goes, I'm ready, I'm ready to go on that piece. And that's kind of what happened with this piece. So that made it really And then, woo, the, the frame just kind of comes from it. Sometimes I just, I like to add paint 
and I like the paint on them and I also like to add mosaics. It's really all about color and texture and when I start a piece I just don't know where it's going to end. I just keep working it and working it till it just, it's over, it stops. <laughs> on having the ultimate artist education. I really wanted to live in San Francisco. I also had a vision of living in New York. So after I went to art school, I then went to NYU Graduate Film School, and all of a sudden I discovered filmmaking, and that's when I started making movies. But of course, after filmmaking, I moved to Los Angeles, where I directed a few movies. I got a chance to make a movie called Modern Girls, which was a late 80s chick flick. It was girls going to nightclubs in LA looking for guys and had Virginia Madsen and Cindy Gibb and Daphne Zanita in it. And then after that, I got an opportunity to direct my epic film and the one that gave me my 15 minutes of Andy Warhol fame, Assault of the Killer Bimba. They were just a pretty picture. Whoa! Until they got framed. Oh no, a bimbo with a gun. <laughs> Now they're the world's most wanted bimbos. Give me the police! Against the world's most unbelievable bozos. Spread them. Move over, Rambo. Help! Get ready for... Plane? Personality? What are you kidding? Yeah. Assault of the Killer Bimbos. Rated R. That's funny, I like that. One of the things that's really exciting about living in Los Angeles is you get a chance to have your artwork on TV shows and movie sets. I have a couple set decorators I like to work with, and whenever they're working on a new show, they come over to the studio and they take a look at my stuff, and it's a good way to get my work out there and to make a little money on it. One of the exciting sets I was on was Friends. So on the um, Central Perk set, they usually have a big painting in the back, and I got an opportunity to have two different paintings in the back of the set, as well as tons of accessories and decor pieces. Um, I remember my work was on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and at one scene they were like sword fighting with my lamp, and it was kind of neat. Right now, actually, there's a show on ABC called The Mill. It's on Wednesday nights, and it's a very kitsch, very over-the-top uh, set in Indiana. And they have about 40 of my pieces. It's as if the set decorator said to me, it's like the Anita Rosenberg show. I have a lot of celebrity collectors, which is very exciting, and, and it's exciting when I get to meet somebody. I was um, one time at the um, deli counter standing next to Jennifer Aniston, and I said, you know, I said, do you have one of my ski frames? And so, you know, John Travolta has a wonderful piece of mine, and George Clooney, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and even Hillary Clinton, um, Spike Lee has a piece, so. American. You finished?